In a previous video, Extend the Power of Google Apps, we showed how you can create a new SQL table, plus, import the data from that spreadsheet into the table, all in one, fell swoop. In this vid, we will show you how to make a minor edit to the table, the save, as, which will create a new table with a very similar structure. We will use this new table as a backup table that will record all data edits made to the original table. If someone makes a data entry mistake, we can fix it by looking at our history table. To do this, we will make a pgsql trigger function and add a table trigger to the original table. Yes, it does sound a bit confusing, but inch by inch, everything is a cinch. We will locate the original table and open the table editor. Go to Actions, Edit Table Structure. Right now, our table has nine columns. We are going to use the Save As feature to create our backup table. We want the backup table to have one additional column which we will call Operation. This column will hold one of the following entries, Insert, or Delete, or Update. So we will add a new column, then do a Save, As, to create our backup table. Please watch closely. We will name our backup table, then click Save as Copy. The original table will not be altered, but we will have our backup table ready for future use. The backup table was created and now, we are working on that table. No additional changes are required for the moment. If we refresh the Y tree, we will see the new table in the list. We have completed step 1 and created a backup table. Our next step is to create a pgsql trigger function. After that, we will apply the trigger function to our original table. Then finally, we will test. Always, 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 test. No, I did not stutter. Create a new function and call it EE Checker. This is a type of function called a trigger function. If an operation happens to a table, then this function will run. Otherwise, nothing will happen. This function type is called volatile because it will cause an actual change to be made to the database, in this case, our backup table. I type 7 words per minute, so in the interest of brevity, I will paste the text of the function. We will go through it in a minute. We have not yet tried to save, but let's look at the SQL right now. Before we save, you can see that the web system automatically names your trigger, but nevertheless, you are the one that will do most of the work. You may need a developer's assistance in writing your first few trigger functions step by step. If something happens to our original table, then something happens to the backup table. The long-winded version is this, if a person tries to delete a row from the original table, then the data in that row will be first be inserted, or said differently copied into our backup table. Next, if a new row is inserted into our original table, then that new row will also be put into our backup table. Finally, if someone updates the information in a row of the original table, then the old values will first be put into the backup table, along with the word update. The word update will be put into the column in the backup table called operation. Don't be alarmed if you do not immediately understand as it will make more sense after we test, and you can see what happens. Now click, create. Before I forget, the tg underscore op, is part of the pgsql trigger language. It is short for trigger operation. Now that we have saved, let's look at the sql and you will see that it is all there. By the way, if our trigger function had an error, we would not be able to save. Instead, 
an error message would spit out. We have completed our second step, create a trigger function. Now we need to go back to our original table and apply this function. This is called creating a table trigger, which is separate from creating the actual trigger function, our just completed step. The table trigger will run our trigger function. Go to the Triggers tab. Click New. Give it a short name. This trigger fires after someone inserts, deletes, or updates. It will fire for each affected row. Now we must designate the trigger function that we wrote earlier. Our table trigger will run this specific trigger function. Let's check the auto generated SQL, then try to save the changes. Wonderful. That concludes our third step. Now let's test our table trigger and trigger function. This is the table we imported from Myama's Google spreadsheet in a previous video. Let's test our new trigger function and table trigger. First, we will add a row and save. Then we will update a row and save. Finally, we will delete a row and save. Then we will check our backup table to see if our various changes were properly recorded. We will update her name. To delete a row, move your cursor over the number and right click. More options will appear. The row is highlighted as pink and will be deleted when you click Save. So we have inserted a row, David Dingle. Then we updated a row. Beatrice Baker and finally, we are about to delete a row, David Dingle. David failed to impress us during his 20 seconds as an employee, so we will terminate him. We set up the backup table in a separate tab of our browser. We will go to it now, and use the Y tree to refresh its view. We should see our backup table, with an appropriate history of our changes made in this, our work table. Let's refresh our view. We should see our changes. Well isn't that super sparkly? We have our history table and it is working quite well. Now I'll scroll to the right. I want to see the column, operations. This is exactly what I wanted to see. Our history has been recorded and, we know the type of change that was made, for each row. Ayama watched this video three times, then did it herself. I'm not a geek, but, I did it. 